Myanmar, or Burma as we know it, is a country that's only recently become accessible to the general public. After many years of brutal military rule, it has finally opened up and has provided people with an opportunity to see a part of the East which hasn't changed for centuries. Often when we are taking pictures of something like this, what will happen is that we'll just pull the camera up, we'll snap a picture and we'll walk away. And when we get home, we have this kind of image of a temple or something floating in midair. And that's what we want to avoid, images that look bland and uninteresting. When you're away in a place like this, everyone wants to come away with pictures they'll be happy with. So while I was in Burma, I set out to give you my top three photography tips. So we start our tour by heading north to the city of Mandalay. The name alone conjures up images of the Orient and a time gone by era. But besides from the bustling streets, it's also home to one of the most photographed bridges in Asia. When you come to an iconic thing like the Uben Bridge, this massive stretch of teak bridge which goes across the lake here, you often have to think about how you could use composition in an interesting way. And one of the best things to do is to focus on what we call leading lines. Now this particular place really lends itself to leading lines because you've got this massive stretch here that goes off into the distance. Looking at an image is often a very physical activity and using these leading lines really helps to draw the viewer into the centre of the image so that as a photographer they are looking at what we want them to see. The bridge sweeps off down here so if we try to use this line and perhaps some of the characters walking along the bridge to really draw the viewer in it'll make a much bolder composition. There are also plenty of other really authentic places to photograph in this city. It's not hard when you go to Mandalay to get away from the crowds and find something which is genuinely authentic. If you come to some of these small streets here you'll find the local people who make a living out of flattening gold so it can be used as gold leaf. This can be used for like ceremonial purposes so that they can put it onto the statues of the Buddha as a kind of a ritual process. These always provide really interesting opportunities to get out of the midday light which can often be quite harsh and unforgiving in hot countries like this and photograph some of the local people working away. So after the second process, this is the third process and what are they doing here? Yeah, uh, here, here, third process, yeah. they have to beat for five hours. Okay, so after they've beaten for five hours then yeah. they do this? Yeah, it became like this. This and is a kind of like a final process. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, one in the final process they have to cut uh, make for the two inches square uh -huh. of the gold. So they separate them here? They separate each other. And what's the white powder there? Oh, it's like a uh, rice powder or chalk, you know, uh -huh. chalk Just powder. To, to Not to be sticky. Uh, so you can yeah. get it sticky. Yeah. So yeah. You, could, you have a problem if you did this with sweaty hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The next destination we're heading off to is the beautiful Inlay Lake at about a thousand meters above sea level, it's one of the most photographic places you'll ever go. It's not hard to see why this is such a popular place to go. The beauty and quietness of the lake and the tranquil nature of the people that exist here is something that really lends itself to photography. I don't think you could get a more iconic picture of Asia than being out here at sunset with the leg rowing fishermen. Leg rowing is something that's only used on this lake. The local people have developed an incredible style where they snake through the water using their leg to push the oar and keeping one hand free to use on their nets. It's an incredible feat of acrobatics and they make it look so easy I thought I should probably give it a try. Slowly standing up. Yeah. Find my inner zen. Yeah. Trying to get one foot up. Whoa. Okay. One foot. One foot up. With, it has to be said, variable degrees of success. Back to the photography, and you can really see why this place is such a popular destination. Looking at the way that the mist forms over the lake, the fishermen drift past, and the local people wave to you as you go by. 
The nice thing about walking around some of the smaller villages outside of the Inlay Lake is that you really get a sense of the real life and how friendly everyone is. These villages provide an excellent opportunity to take some reportage photography of the locals going about their lives. One of the most important things is to interact with people. That way, you get much more genuine images, and you're not coming across as one of those tourists who just likes to stick their camera in people's faces. Okay, okay, here we go. You ready? I don't want it to go in the lake. Like that. Is that, is that better? It's about time that we start thinking about the tip that we're bringing back from this location, and that is to get closer. By that we mean, you don't necessarily have to get closer, but think about what it is that interests you about what you're photographing. So rather than including too much in the shot, less is more. Think to yourself, why have I stopped? What has attracted me to that particular angle or scene or shot? And then try and focus in on just that element rather than trying to cram too much into the same picture. So less is more. That's what we've got to think about as we move to the next destination, which is Bagan. Temple Heaven. Now in order to imagine what this place is like, you have to in your head take all the major cathedrals out of Europe, place them into some scrubby bushland about the size of Manhattan, and then you will get close to the amazing scale and beauty that this place presents us with. I think the best way to photograph a place like this is to make sure that you're taking pictures in the morning or the evening. Light is the most important element when it comes to doing landscapes and that's when the light's coming from a direction. So it provides us with warmer tones and it pulls out the texture in the buildings in a much more effective way. But if you get bored of photographing temples, you can always escape the midday heat and head to some of the local markets where you can do a bit of shopping. Are you? This is the long gear, is yes, it? Yes, long tees for my long tea. Okay. You see twice? Only you look it, huh? You're going to help me put one on? Yes. Okay. So this is the traditional, uh, this is the traditional outfit of the people from Myanmar. Yes. The Myanmaran? Yes. Check it out. Yes. You're very handsome. I'm very, I'm very handsome. Yes, you're very handsome. <laughs> oh, that's sure as well? Yes, very good. Oh you my god. Oh, really? How do you make it? You chew it, yeah? You put it in a leaf. One of the other things that the locals do quite a lot in Myanmar is chew betel nut, that mysterious, slight hallucinogenic which gives you terrible red teeth. Can I make two out of this? I'm gonna make two out. So we thought it would be rude not to at least try it. But we're gonna share one. We're gonna have little okay, little one. Yeah, yeah we're okay, gonna yeah, share. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Few beetle nuts. Yeah. Is that it? And then where do you put it in your mouth? In the side. Yeah, mine. Okay. There you go, Bolsky. Knock yourself out. Mmm, delicious. So as we leave the market, it's important to remember that we try and take as many pictures as we can so that we don't miss any opportunities when we're out in these amazing locations. One final tip if you come to a place like this. Try to take at least three photographs of everything that interests you. No one's a genius, and even if you can think of the most iconic picture in the world, it wasn't taken in one shot. It was a series of lots of shots. So if you make sure that when you find something you're interested in, you change the angle, you keep thinking about what it was that stopped you in the first place, by the third and fourth shot, you'll actually start to figure out what it is that you, know, you want to take a picture of and get a much more concise composition. So one thing to remember, don't take just one picture of everything you come across. Take at least three. So there you have it, there's a few tips that I think should help improve your holiday snaps. I hope that you find them as unforgettable as I found this truly magical country.